Hello friends! Welcome to full build video of Nakajima Zero Fighter in 130 second scale from Tamiya. The kit has all you need to build very nice and detailed model. Additionally, there is a display stand and two figures of Japanese pilots. Apart from excellent welded plastic, there are photo etched parts, seat belts, rubber tires and brake hoses, canopy masks, metal gun barrels and pitot tube, and many more. The instruction is detailed and clear, with cool tech tips and reference photos for each section of the aircraft. More detailed review of this kit will be soon on my channel. I'm going to build this model completely out of the box. Ok, maybe I will add some small scratch build adjustments, but no aftermarket upgrades of any kind. I start following the instruction from fuselage and interior assembly. All elements fit just perfectly and after the black primer I paint it with colors suggested in the instruction. To make the interior look more realistic, I use a steel color and dry brush technique. Paint chipping on the pilot seat is imitated with an old sponge. When I have all parts ready, I put a coat of gloss varnish and later apply an oil wash to bring up details. Using reference pictures from the instruction, I add few wires.
Seat belts are made out of sticker and photo etched buckles. I mount them on the seat with a CA glue. Both sides of the interior, the back with a pilot seat and the instrument panel fits with no issues and I glue them right away. Same with the fuselage, the fit is just perfect. It's time to join the two pieces together. The pilot's office goes in easy and smooth. Stabilizers also finds the way with no issues. And this stage is complete. For more details about this stage, please check build part one video on my channel. Link is in the description. Landing gear covers have metal elements that move. Parts are small and I use a wooden stick to hold them. Before I glue the wheel well in place, I just make sure that everything that is supposed to move is moving and it's on, in the right place. Joining these two elements, I mean fuselage and wings, was never that easy. It just click on the place. 
For some parts that move, the spe a special grease is provided, like here for this landing gear. The shock absorber will be working like a real thing. Like many elements in this kit, also the engine is very nicely detailed. I glue cylinders together and prime all parts. For such a nice engine, I decided to add wires that go to the cylinders. I know it will not be visible or barely visible, but I always wanted to try. For this, I use 0.1 mm copper wire and CA glue. The exhaust pipes look very plastic, so I will try to drill holes in them with the smallest drill I could find. I'll add rust effect on the exhaust. You can see how I make the rust on the channel, link is in the description. It's time for some fun with the wires. I'm going to cut them to desired length and stick to the cylinder with CA glue.
Before I start with painting, I mask all elements that I don't want to paint. I clean the model to degrease it and remove dust. Some spots I have to correct. For this I use Tamiya glue and putty. I plan to do a lot of chipping. To have a good base for it, I paint the whole model with steel color. Later, I spray a chipping fluid. Tamiya suggests to paint wheel wells in blue. However, this color was used only by Nakajima factory. For Mitsubishi aircraft, they use the same gray color that they paint the underside of the, of the plane. So this is important later when we need to choose the painting version of our model. The main paints indicated on the instruction AS2 for grey and AS21 for green are spray colors. I tried to find match for them using Hobby Color Converter application and here is where this app fails. It showed me that XF70 and XF27 will be a good match for AS21. When I compare these two the app shows 100% match and because I had XF27 already, I decided to use it. That was a mistake. As you can see, these two colors are totally different. So, well, you'll see in the video later how I correct that. But overall, I found it all very confusing. But luckily, there is a great help provided by James Lansdale and Nick Millman. Before you decide what paint to use, visit this website to find information. Ok, enough about colors, let's go back to work. I start from the bottom of the model, I paint slowly, panel by panel. And to add shades, I use the same color, but additionally, two drops of black. Also, I add more thinner to the mix and low air pressure.
highlights, I add with the same color mix, but instead of 4, I add 6 or 7 drops of white. Now the funny part begins. I mixed XF27 with just few drops of XF5 and with the same approach like for the grey under the model, I painted the upper surface. Hinomaru, I decided to paint for better effect. To make the mask, I use masking tape and circle cutter. First, I place the circle to position the mask, and when I think it's on the right spot, I add mask. And, of course, remove the circle. Because I do not like the result, I mean the green color, I decided to add XF70 tint on the top. And I think it looks much better now. There are decals for yellow stripes, but I will paint them as well. Yellow usually takes few layers to cover, so I apply 5 or 6. The last step for this part is to cover decals with gloss varnish. With this step, I think the paint phase is done. Let's see how it all looks together. Water will react with the chipping fluid under the paint and after a few seconds I can start with chipping. Various tools are useful for the purpose. I use a toothpick, brush, sandpaper and sometimes even a cotton bud.
Some people say there is no way to overweather a zero. Well, somehow I think I managed to do that. <laughs> As I got carried away with the chipping process, it, the result is maybe too much, but I will use this to add some lighter green and some areas I will paint again. Before I start with decals, I prepare the surface with gloss varnish. First, I add a light coat that I leave for about 30 minutes and when it's dry, I apply a wet coat. I leave it for the night and later I use 5000 grit sandpaper to smooth the surface. A standard procedure for decals is to put them into warm water, water for a few seconds, later with the microset, place them on the spot and soft them with microsol. Microsol solution should help the decal to conform to the surface. I apply it a few times and still I'm not happy with the result. Decals seem thick and or <laughs> they are resistant to microsol. Anyway, I help them with a toothpick. On the spots where I removed paint, I also removed the decal. The last step for this part is to cover decals with gloss varnish. To underline panel lines and rivets, I use an oil wash. I apply it where I want it to work and few minutes after I remove the excess with white spirit. The difference is barely visible on this dark green, but on the brighter color it is much more pronounced. I found this picture on the internet while looking for weathering inspiration. I will try to replicate the effect with oil paints.
Adding random dots of oil paint under the wing makes the surface look more diverse. I use a white spirit to blend them in. Whole model gets now the coat of matte varnish. And I start the most satisfying part of the job, which is peeling off the canopy mask and revealing what's inside. I use ultra glue from Amomic to assembly lights on the wings and basically all clear elements. The metal antenna wire is included in the kit, but it seems too thick for me, uh, so I replace it with the rigging from Amomi. And the model is complete. I hope you liked it. I enjoyed the build very much. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And let me know in the comments what you think about this build. Thank you for watching and see you next time.